All right, now we're going to have the chance to see Josh Hayes operate the 150 with expert Eric Kahoot during this Spotlight Series. So get ready to learn about what this 150 can do and how it can help you. Guys? Come on in, Josh. So he just talks about the 150, but we want to show it's the 140 M3 all-wheel drive. For those who don't know me, my name's Eric Kahoot. I'm the product specialist for Motor Graders. And as you've been introduced already, we got Josh Hayes in the 140 M3 all-wheel drive. They actually call him Velvet Fingers. If there's anybody that can operate a motor grader, he's operator extraordinaire. So excited to be working with him today and being able to talk about motor graders. Why don't you pull it up here and park? What do you what do you guys got going on here? So we talked about the 140 M3 all-wheel drive machine. What we wanted to show you is the old tray dress on the machine, and as those guys come in here, they're gonna peel it off and reveal the 150. We recently have, we recently changed the um, nomenclature and the tray dress on the machine. So this 140 M3 is now a 150 all-wheel drive. You can see that as they're peeling off all those decals. But it's more than just that. We've also added the next generation grade, which is a solid state grade system that allows you to be able to add the next generation of CAT grade platform um, for 2D or 3D type systems, as well as extended service intervals and lower filtration costs by about 20%. So we're pretty excited because this is more than a nomenclature and trade dress change. You can also see we've changed that nomenclature. We simplified it. So the construction graders are 120 through 160. So there are three numbers and our mining graders are two numbers for the size of the standard blade. You know, for 40, for 92 years, motor graders have been, or CAT's been building motor graders. It's the second oldest product line in our portfolio. And in 2018, we launched or introduced the steering wheel and levers to the market again, giving the operators and customers choice that works best for those folks. So you can choose your choice of controls, joysticks, steering wheel and levers, you can choose your drive system, rear tandem or all wheel drive, depending upon your conditions that you wanna work, as well as you can scale and put features and functions on these machines that best work for you. No technology or fully capable technologies. So Josh, why are you going in the circle? I tell you what, I'm just trying to dress up this uh, little pedestal you're standing on. I thought it needed a little bit of attention. And what I want to do is also just show the versatility of the machine. As you talk, you know, this is the 150 joystick machine, uh, 3D grade capable, but uh, I just wanted to show this thing has full capability of what a motor grader is supposed to be. So, you know, I have the ability now to take the pin out of the link bar and do a lot of that type of work that I might not have to or be able to do with a dual mass system. Now, before I take off, I want to talk about uh, a, one nice feature that I use quite a bit on this machine. It's called auto articulation. Do I have time to talk about that? that Absolutely. Cool? Let's talk about it because I think it's important yeah. on these motor graders as often as you may be turning around on the job site. Tell us how yeah, it absolutely. makes your life easy. So, so in a nutshell, Eric, I can activate auto articulation up here on the B post. And once I activate that feature, basically, the back of the machine, the rear hitch will articulate and stay in the same line as the front steering. So the machine knows steering angle and it will compensate the, the rear of the machine to track in the exact same degree of articulation. So where's this handy? I tell you what, a lot of different cul-de-sac work, radius work, anytime the operator is trying to really concentrate on where the back of the machine is, this is where this thing shines. Um, there's a lot of times, you know, you're trying to maybe trace curb and trying to get that perfect radius, uh, maybe keeping the front end, the foot, the front tires, the foot away from the curb, and you're trying to concentrate on grade and concentrate on the tandems. With this feature, it does it all by itself. So that's that's really nice feature to use. No, uh, great. No, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, now, obviously, that's great for that. What about turning around? I mean, I see you doing a lot of turning here. Is it making yeah. your life easier there? Well, I've been out here for two weeks in this little bitty area, and I've used this feature a lot. And 
the, the one of the big shining stars is the the ability to have the back end steer by itself. So as you can see now, I'm just moving the joystick and the back end is leading where I'm wanting to go. So this feature, you can either activate auto, articul auto articulation working in forward only or forward and reverse. And I typically leave it in forward and reverse. That's really nice. Perfect. Well, let's talk about great technologies. Obviously, we talked about this has the new sensors on it. You can get this machine with ARO, attachment ready option, which gives you the ability to put a 2D or 3D type system on. You can also get this machine out of the factory with a 2D type setup that gives you blade slope, cross slope. But we're super excited to introduce this machine. Josh, what do we have on this one that makes this different than anything else? Well, I tell you what, all the sensors on this machine uh, how they all talk to each other, that's what makes it different from the rest. So in this situation right here, I'm gonna make one back up and make one more pass. You'll find a lot of times you're in a position maybe where you need to reach down in the ditch such as what I have here, but deposit the material between the tires. So with that, you know, with the mask machine, I would have the mask into the ladder or the, the cab glass actually in this scenario right here. So this is really nice being able to utilize this in a situation and know that I can still stay on grade and then not have to worry about the mass, the receivers, or any of that component damage. As well as how much time does it give it? Do you need to uh, set that up? I mean, do you need to add anything every day or do you just kind of get in and start? Absolutely not. Typically, I just get in and start. So, you know, the mass are on top of the cab. You can see on the back of the cab is the one receiver and then the other receivers on the mainframe they're bolted in so we don't have to take those off every night the receivers on front of the cab so that stays there as well all the sensors that make this system work they are you know hard mounted to the different components we'll cover that here in a little bit so no i basically get in turn it on pull up my design and go to work which is really nice so this cat with great grade with 3d has also a feature we haven't talked about it's called efense and what that does is prevents the DCM, the drawbar, circle, and moldboard from contacting the link bar, as well as it prevents the moldboard from contacting the tires and the ladder. So you basically have more uptime and less machine damage with this E-Fence feature, which is an uh, industry exclusive available on this uh, cat with 3D. Hey, so, Eric, yes. Eric, one more thing I want to talk about. So yes. the nice thing about with this new grade system, um, what I typically didn't do before is anytime I come in and out of my cuts, I can leave my autos on, or I call them arm. And the nice thing is you can come in and out of grade and it'll latch on grade and not, you know, put a big divot or a jump in grade. So that's another nice feature that I use as well. Also, with this system, I've noticed that even when you end your windrows, I articulate a lot, lean the wheels and, you know, use the, all the functionality of the machine this thing stays right on grade. So that's really nice too. Typically, you know, in the past, you had to um, shut the machine, not the machine off, but turn the autos off, go in manual, and then go back in auto when you're back on grade. So it's pretty nice. Now that's, that's super good. So you're able to use all functionality that you may have been limited before on a massive system. A absolutely. So, you know, there's, like I said, there's onboard sensors. Um, this thing knows every position of the moldboard in pitch. So typically with a mask machine and I have a pitch sensor on there, I could only pitch that moldboard forward about 10 degrees, which isn't very much. After that, I start to lose accuracy. I can have full range of pitch of the moldboard, you know, so that allows me to have, you know, up to seven inches of cut or fill. Uh, that's super nice. Also, there's an IMU on the yoke, which will point out that knows exactly the, the position of the drawbar, left or right, very important as well. Uh, and it knows that when I'm leaning the front tires. So the beauty is, you know, the contractor I work for, we know we had great accuracy with a dual mass system, but honestly, we started running single mass because it gave me the versatility of going in high bank and things like that. But we all know when you have a single mass system, the operator can induce a lot of different errors with that. So with this system here, I got all that functionality and I don't have to worry about inaccuracy at all. So there's a lot of excitement and cool things about having a massless cat grade 3D. But why would someone want a mask yet, Josh? I the big thing, portability, right? Being able to you know, switch kits from one machine to the other, 
or maybe I'm a contractor that is using UTS or a laser system, you know, those are the types of t the times maybe you would want to, you know, think about a mask system. Perfect. Well, what else can you do with this? I mean, obviously, we talked about the grade and what you can do in there. Um, how else can this system, add, without the mask, increase your utilization of this machine? Well, like you said, utilization, that's what it's all about. You know, at the, the end of the day or the end of the job, there's always times you're trying to worry about drainage. You know, um, maybe there's a piece on the job you're tying into existing, and you're just trying to, you know, make it work if you will so again this thing has complete versatility situation just like this if i had a dual mass machine it's virtually impossible to do a high bank pass so i still have you know all that versatility the machine was you know meant to have and i don't have to worry about all those components so you know i could you know maybe this is a scraper cut we're bringing down a slope or something like this i can come in bring my slope down not have to worry about any of the components come off that slope let the scrapers come in, start taking the slope, you know, the big built dirt out, and then, you know, I can go right back on 3D grade and I'm back to work again. So that's really nice. I don't have anything to worry about being in the way. Well, perfect. And you make going into a high bank look really easy, Josh. Why don't you quick <laughs> talk people into how you go in and out of that? Because I know we've had a lot of people ask about it on the 140 out there. How do we get there? Well, a little trick I've learned is, you know, going into the high bank, I. Rule of thumb is I take everything to the right, draw bar to the right, bowl board all the way to the right, um, roll the blade all the way back, take everything to the right, put drop it in float, pull the pin out of the link bar, and then just move the link bar cylinder and that's it. It'll take it right, you know, in the far the far link bar hole. The other thing is, you know, putting it back in, I always make sure my left lift cylinder is vertical, put the machine at the mold board back in float, and uh, use that single draw bar cylinder and it'll go right back under and you don't have to worry about it affecting grade. Well, you make it sound so simple, Josh. Obviously, you've had a little bit of practice over time here. Why don't you uh, bring it in here? Let's take a while, uh, cool it down and talk about all the components on this machine. Sounds like a great idea. All right, Eric, while we're doing our five minute cool down. Let's take a few minutes and I'll point out, I think there's a lot of people been asking, you know, what really makes this system work? So this would be a great opportunity to do a quick walk around and explain a little bit about the GPS receivers and the sensors. So I'll start back here, start high and work my way low. We have a GPS receiver on the back of the cab and also on the front of the cab is our radio and where Eric's pointing up front on the mainframe, that's our other GPS receiver. So the nice thing is having that receiver on front of the mainframe, I can still look at my three lights and I can do some diagnostic checks if I have any issues with the system. So really great having that out front as well. Uh, moving forward, as I was running the machine, I talked a little bit about having the capabilities of moving the draw bar left and right. On the other side, on the yoke right here, we have an IMU sensor. Eric, what's IMU mean? IMU means inertial measurement unit. It's really just a fancy way of saying sensor. So the IMU allows me to move that draw bar left and right and still stay accurate because it does the calculations that it needs to do. So typically we talked about single mast application for accuracy with a single mast application, you need to run that circle right underneath in the center. And there's a lot of applications since, we, you know, such as we we're doing here, you need to move the draw bar left and right. So that's the beauty of this system and having that sensor here. Moving on down, we still have our rotation sensor on top of the swivel box. Same sensor we've had for years, works great. No change there. Also, we have another IMU sensor here on the cross beam on, on the draw bar. The purpose of this sensor, the IMU, is it understands draw bar attitude, whether the draw bar is flat, uphill or downhill. And we know typically when an operator changes pitch of the mole board, that changes the attitude of the draw bar. Okay, so we need to know that measurement in order to stay accurate. So that's basically what this IMU does as well. In regards to cross slope, back here on the back of the torque tube, we have a two axis IMU. So this IMU understands cross slope of what the mold board would be. Also, it understands the pitch of the mold board. So it's a, it's a dual axis. It's protected very well. 
and we don't have this sensor right here on the back of the circle anymore. It's down on the torque tube. Works very well. What am I missing here? The brains of the system, right? So right up front, Eric's pointing at, that's EC510. That's the brains of the system. Very important to know what that is and what it does. So number one is what makes the system work, and then also it understands the, the main follow of the, the machine. So it knows if the machine's flat, working uphill or working downhill to make that mathematical calculation. Also, that's what helps understand wheel lean. Typically before, we would never had a way of really understanding and taking a measurement for wheel lean. This EC510 is smart enough to know what the wheel lean is too. So again, as in a nutshell, I have the capability to do anything with this machine and completely stay on grade. And uh, I've had the opportunity to be involved with the research and development with this machine and been running it out here for a couple of weeks and this thing I can truly say is one awesome grading machine. Well Josh, we talked a lot about the IMUs, the sensors. Aren't we missing one position sensing cylinder? Absolutely. That's the only in-cylinder position sensor we have is for the auto side shift. We didn't want to lose that capability of being able to select a flow line or a plan line or a tow line and lose our auto side shift capability. So. That is our only in-sensor, in-cylinder sensor. Other than that, it's all IMUs. It makes it work. So this is cat grade with 3D, but what if they wanted to use it just in 2D? Is that capability there? Absolutely, so you do have full 2D capabilities. It all works off the same sensor. So myself as the operator, all I have to do is go into the menu structure of the monitor and the cab, go from 3D to 2D, and then I have the ability to do my 2D work. So very simple, don't have to switch any sensors out. It's all scalable, really nice. So basically in summary here, we have lots of choices for everybody. Choices and then controls that you can have, choices of drives. You can set these motor graders up to you want. Technology, no technology, we've got you covered. As well as new models and new technology and integration. So Josh, how about everyone give Josh a round of applause. Truly appreciate the efforts uh, he put in. And uh, thank you very much for your time today. If you have any questions, uh, head on out and see us out at the 140 or later in the 150. Thanks, thank everybody, you. for coming out. It's good to see everybody this week. All right. Yeah, Josh. Eric, you guys, too. Thank you guys so much. So cool to get to see that technology up close and personal. You nailed it, man. We're going to be back in a short bit with Mike Rowe for Titan of the Trades. Before we go, though, look up the big screen. We've got our QR code for the great giveaway. You can scan that and check in for the Spotlight Series. Just take your phone out, go to take a picture, and it'll give you a link to follow. We're giving away cat hats, cat phones, even a cat mini excavator, and that's why I keep following the QR code as well because who wouldn't want one of those to play with? We'll be back shortly with Mike Rowe from Dirty Jobs and Mike Rowe Works for his game, Titan of the Trades.